Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I tune and on the vote my i7 4700MQ and uh, right now I'm currently stress testing the CPU with CPU Z and the stress test has been going on for just around 5 to 8 minutes maybe we've settled down at a score of 1275 with the base clock of 2.35 uh, gigahertz and you can see our temperatures here are just under 80 there is 80 on core 1 but the rest of the cores are hovering between um, high 70s and low 80s You can also see our max temperatures here, they've spiked up to 90 degrees C, or 93 degrees C on core 1. And this was when the computer just started the stress test and we went from a score of over 1600, which required those 90 degrees C temperature, and settled down at this score here. Now this is what happens when the computer is not undervoted, especially an i7. Um, the it blasts out the the heat because it's um, it's overvoted. The the companies basically give you a computer that has more voltage to the CPU than actually required to do the job. So let's switch on uh, throttle stop now and see what happens when we have uh, a CPU that is undervoted undergoing stress test. And also, I would like to show you how I tune the, the max frequencies of all cores since my computer was upgraded from a 37 watt TDP heatsink from an i5 which is 37 watts to an i7 with 47 watts. I'm not able to go full speed 3.1 gigahertz on all cores um, like this CPU can, can achieve. So I have to clock down to around 2.6 which gives me something stable um, over 2.6 we start crossing that 85 degrees C temperature which is the maximum thermal protection limit of this computer anything above 85 the computer immediately throttles down uh, the CPU to its base clock of 2.4 gigahertz so let me stop the stress test now Actually, let me take a screenshot so we can compare before and after. And uh, remember, the temperatures were high 70s and low 80s. Okay, the stress test has been stopped. You can see the CPU go down uh, to base to lowest clocks. And you can see the graph here taper down to the base. Temperatures have gone down to around 55 degrees C. I'm going to now reset all these temps so that when we have an underclocked, an undervoted CPU, we're going to see what temperatures it um, tops out at when we start the stress test again. I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to link to you guys a video on how to undervote your CPU, a, a very, very good video. And there are so many of them. Uh, in this video, I'm not going to show you how to download and install. So please look at the description for that video or simply search on YouTube how to undervote uh, your CPU using throttle stop. This is what I'm using now. Okay, so let's go to, let's open hardware monitor. And right now I've, I've turned on throttle stop. You can see it activated here in my task bar. And you can see here, I already have a minus 102 millivolt. Um, yes, 0 0.012. 
what am I saying? 0 0.102 volts. So 102 millivolts offset. And that confirms that throttle stop is now currently working and on the volt in the CPU. So you can see this is how throttle stop looks like. So here are my settings. To undervolt the CPU, you have to go to Fiverr and on CPU Core. You unlock, you check here to unlock adjustable voltage, and then you scroll this down. I found that I have a minus 99.6 millivolt is good for me and doesn't doesn't crash neither when I'm stress testing nor when I'm uh, just basically idling because I could push this down lower to in into the hundreds and successfully stress test the computer but then have a blue screen of that on uh, just idling doing nothing so you have to Make sure that uh, you're, you're testing your voltages, your under voltage, even when you're idling. So the same thing in the CPU cache. You unlock. You can see if it's locked, if it's not checked here, I can't do anything. So you click here to unlock this and then you go down to the same voltage that you went down for the CPU core. Intel GPU I am stable at minus 50.8 millivolts on the volt. So I go down here to click apply and you can see here you have a possibility to set the maximum core speed and this is what you do when you want to tune your CPU. I know that on, at four cores, anything above 2.6 will throttle me down after a couple of minutes of re rendering a video. So there is just no need to try to go up to uh, 3 gigahertz when you then end up being throttled down to 2.4. So I know that at 2.6 I can shave off a few tens of seconds from the video render time by keeping it constantly at 2.6. You can also overclock your CPU if you have adequate cooling up to 3.6 GHz on this i7 uh, 4700MQ. So I'm just going to put this, leave this here at 2.6, apply, and make sure this is checked, save voltages immediately. And it's done. So here from this screen I could also enable or disable turbo and uh, DB Pro Shot but this Pro Shot doesn't work for me because my computer is maxed out at 85 degrees C and you can see even when I try to click the fo to force the Pro Shot signal to go out at 100 degrees C I'm not able to. I'm currently clicking and nothing is happening. So let's disable Turbo and let's stress test again. So remember now we are at minus 100 millivolts on the volt. Let's see what happens when I start stress testing. Watch these temperatures. Okay, so now we went up to 1400 on this result. But look at the temperatures. The max that we hit was 78, 79 degrees C. Obviously, this is going to continue to go up, but you can see our current temperatures are just in the low 70s. Speed is 2.6 gigahertz. 
2.4 we are now just around just under 100 points more in the stress test and you can see that the CPU is allowed to go above the 2.4 so let me run this now for some minutes and uh, come back when uh, let's say in just a couple of minutes okay so it's been a couple of minutes probably two or three or maybe more and uh, the CPU has now throttled itself down to 3.4 3.2.3 um, that is 2.4 gigahertz and basically it uh, throttled itself down because it knows this is a stress test and it's been going for some time so you we have now a score of 2. Um, 1283 which is just a couple of points more than the last test in which the computer wasn't undervolted but look at the temperatures we still have not crossed the 80 mark 80 degrees C and what this means is that uh, our cooler has been able to our cooling system has been able to keep this computer at the base clock of 2.4 gigahertz on four cores and not crossed over to the 80 degrees C it's basically relaxing here at the low 70s in fact, the core 3 is uh, 68, 69 degrees C. This gives us over 10 degrees C of headroom for short bursts of work. Obviously, when you're doing a very long stress test like this, the computer is just going to settle down at a speed at which it's comfortable with for that, uh, that kind of work. When I'm rendering a video, however, it can keep that uh, 2.6 gigahertz for over four minutes the last time I rendered the video was four minutes and it stayed like that throughout so you can see the benefits of on the voting we are giving just the right amount of voltage to the CPU to do this work efficiently instead of wasting voltage and the wasted voltage obviously is converted to heat heat in the long run run damages um, computer the motherboard and other components around the CPU so we really don't want that uh, if we can do the work at a good stable temperature that is low enough and uh, get the work done then why spend uh, unnecessary amount of energy voltage to cause unnecessary amount of heat in the computer so if you haven't undervolted your CPU make sure that you've done that you should be able to have better performance very similar performance or maybe just a little bit more uh, performance than an, a non undervolted CPU but with lower temperatures and better headroom so basically more efficient work okay so just before I go let me show you this was a screenshot we made before so at this point in time with an, a non undervolted CPU we were at 80 to 83 degrees C at this period in time I took a screenshot with over 90 degrees C spike up Th the score was 1274 at that point and the base clock was 2.35 gigahertz now we have a similar score but look at the temperatures low to mid 70s we never got to 80 degrees C for the same 2.35 gigahertz of work so this is how you boost your perform you make more efficient your CPU using less voltage and uh, in the next video I'm going to then physically modify our heat sink in this computer to basically have a double piped heat sink 
and this should allow us to move more heat away from the CPU into the radiator section of the cooling system to be cooled down by the fan. I hope that uh, with this modification I should be able to maybe try to go up to 2.7, 2.8 GHz on all cores during a video render without reaching that 85 degrees C, which is the thermal um, limit, um, protection limit of this computer. It's so unfortunate that uh, this computer has that uh, 85 degrees C limit. Most computers allow you to go up to uh, the mid 90s before they start throttling back the, the CPU. But maybe it's all for the better because when you start dealing with uh, 1 200 megahertz of a uh, of frequency difference, um, there isn't that much difference in time in the final um, time of work done. So for example, the difference between 2.35 gigahertz video render and uh, 2.6 gigahertz was 30 seconds out of the three minutes render. So you can imagine that you're just putting in so much effort for a few seconds off of the end result. And so maybe it may not be worth it, but just as a, an experiment to show you guys what can be done with an old system like this, I will modify those, uh, the heatsink and uh, see what kind of results we can get from this. Thanks for watching. Take care.